people are gonna turn you down. They're gonna stop returning your call. And at that moment, I saw strength. I saw a beautiful, strong woman. Hey, mom, I'm gonna win a gold medal for me, you and dad. No matter what other people are doing, I'm gonna continue to forge forward on this path because I believe that he's my covering. Wow, that was powerful. Now I'm able to stand here 100% cancer free. Hi, my name is Sable Ote and I'm Senior Vice President here with PHP Agency. We just had an amazing mid-year event here with amazing speakers. Um, Senior Vice President here, I'm an ex-USA bobsledder and I have the pleasure of doing an amazing interview with our two wonderful guests here. We have Miss Shantae Lowe, she's a four-time Olympian, bronze medalist, and we also have a lovely special guest here, Mashami Robinson, who's also a gold medalist, and they're gonna be telling us a little bit about their journey. So I wanna start with asking the first question <laughs> to you amazing young ladies. Um, I think everybody wants to know this question. What inspired you to become an Olympian? <laughs> That's a fantastic question. So I watched the Olympics when I was four years old, completely fell in love with Flojo, the way that her hair flowed, her beautiful red, white, and blue nails. And at that moment, I saw strength. I saw a beautiful, strong woman that was still fashionable. She was feminine. I was like, I want to be like that. And so that was my inspiration. And you know, it took me through some of the hardest times in my life having that goal set so far in my future. Awesome. What about yourself, Shami? It's interesting and I love Shantae's story because it was the 1988 Seoul Olympics that I watched um, Florence Griffith join a run. And I was in my mom's basement in Columbus, Ohio, my mom and dad, and I watched her run the 100. I was seven years old. And I remember after she ran, I went upstairs to the kitchen, my mom was cooking peas. And oh I said to her, I said, mom, I'm gonna win a gold medal for me, you and dad. Wow. And That's all bad. I remember was seeing a woman that looked like me in a time on television where I hadn't seen a lot of people who looked like me being celebrated, being phenomenal and representing our country. And I just I just said, I'm gonna do that. I went upstairs <laughs> wow. and said, I'm gonna do that. Went right back downstairs and started watching TV. <laughs> wow, that is awesome. That is so awesome. So let me ask you this. Uh, we've seen like everything you guys have done. Uh, just really briefly, you guys can tell me, what are some of the trials and tribulations that you have encountered on your journey uh, to get in those medals? So for me, um, it was a couple. I came up in a home where there was a lot of domestic, poverty, uh, domestic violence and poverty. At a certain time, I had both of my parents incarcerated. And so after having that dream, I didn't know so many tribulations were gonna come in my path. Mm -hmm. But that's what started building the muscle for resilience. Mm -hmm. Being able to know that these obstacles are there, but finding ways around them causes me not only to be able to push closer towards my goal, but then to reach back to other people that may be experiencing similar situations and trials. Um, one of the other things that I encountered on my pursuit of becoming an Olympic medal was that there were a lot of other athletes that were cheating and doping. And just having that mental challenge of knowing that, wow, there's other people that are not doing things the right way. But to be able to say, no matter what other people are doing, I'm gonna to continue to forge forward on this path and know that it is possible to do it the right way and come to pass. My Olympic medal did not come in the Olympic Stadium. As a matter of fact, my Olympic medal came eight years later after the 2008 Olympic Games as I was a mother of three amazing children, two beautiful girls. And it was determined that Eight years earlier, when I had competed in the rain with a nursing one-year-old and placed sixth, wow. three women who finished in front of me had actually cheated wow. and the medal was reallocated to me. So that is a trial that I had to go through and not to give up on that goal, to continue to persevere despite what the current circumstances look like. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, it is. I mean, oh my God. When it, <laughs> the Olympics crazy. and making a team, is, it is a triumphant thing. As I was growing up, no one told me that I couldn't do it. Um, mm -hmm. And so I just kept moving towards that. Being a kid, you know, my parents really aligning my life and being supportive just right. in the direction right. that we should go. Um, and it was my father who took me to my first track meet. He was supposed to be taking me to dance class. Um, and I won. Had to wow. practice any track. I got, well, when I say I won, I got second in Hershey's, but it qualified me to go to this national event. Yep at nine that I couldn't afford. So my parents couldn't afford the Hershey's track meet. So I didn't run track again until I was 12 years old on my middle school team and just went the natural flow. Um, but what I noticed is going into the Olympic games, I didn't have the Nike contract. Mm -hmm. I didn't have an agent. I had a sure desire and will to be successful and to win a gold medal. Um, I didn't know what that looked like. All I knew is that what my desire was to do and what God has shown me I could do, nothing was gonna stand in the way of that. And I, I went out 
set out with reckless abandon, you know, and even when I did face injury, um, seven weeks before Olympic trials, I completely tore one of my quadricep muscles, which no one really knows the story wow. except for the doctors, um, because it changed the way this doctor actually does his business. They typically would offer and opt for surgery first, but I actually laid hands on myself um, one day because um, I was in sheer pain. I just told God, I said, God, if I can't run anymore, I'll go to the Olympics, just take this pain away. And what I realized from that, when I woke up the next morning and was able to go run at practice, um, there were still some drills I couldn't do, but I could run. Um, I ran five 200s and 26 seconds with one minute's rest, Ooh, right? On the wow. same That's torn quad. Workout. Regardless. <laughs> <laughs> on the same torn quad, right? And so when the doctor called me after having gotten an MRI two days before and they told me what was wrong, I had to tell the doctor what I had done. Mm. And so I came in, they looked at me, they had this whole plan and he says, let's just go get you some massage. Let's do massage yeah. therapy. Wow. Yeah. And I went in, did my neuromuscular massage. The therapist told me, we heard your story. We know you laid hands. I prayed that my hands would be healing. After I won the medal, I went back to the same orthopedic and I showed them the medal. And so awesome. this doctor, Dr. Martini, changed his structure, what he diagnoses and how he plans to treat the diagnosis by first doing neuromuscular massage before offering wow. any surgery to athletes with torn muscles because of that. Wow. And I just, again, that's how powerful the mind is. Yes. You could not tell me that I wasn't winning that medal. So no matter what, I said, listen, although that medal is important to me, God, I'll sacrifice what you showed me yes. to be out of pain. And when God saw that I was willing to give up something tangible yeah. and put my faith in him, that things can still get done yeah. if I trusted him, that's what happened. Wow. And I That's think that cool. it's so important to remember how powerful the mind is yes. and what we tell ourselves. Yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Just having that willpower. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like just digging deep and it just like, you know, no matter what the obstacles are, you find it deep down inside that you can really push. That's amazing. Yeah. Love you guys. Yeah. I, want, I do want to ask a couple questions. I want to be conscientious of your time. So you came here as a guest speaker today. I did. Thank you. You did an amazing <laughs> job. <laughs> Thank you. And I just want you to take the time just to kind of express to us a little bit about your story, just so everybody can hear <laughs> what amazing story she has, guys. Um, if you could just take a couple of minutes, just tell us a little bit about that part. Yes. Yeah, so um, I ended up becoming a four-time Olympian and the American record holder in the women's high jump. Um, I still hold that record to today, but there's some girls coming for me. So I say it every time I get the opportunity. And, you know, it was a journey that was very difficult um, going through after making my first Olympic team, which was the hardest. I ended up getting to the point where I made my second Olympic team as a mother of a nursing one-year-old. Four years later, same thing, yeah. except as a mother of a nursing, another nursing one-year-old. So two babies. By the time I went to my fourth Olympic Games, I had three children. Wow. And I knew that just like Mashami was talking about here, it's the sheer determination that no matter what obstacle comes along your way, you could find a way to overcome it. When I, w when I was younger and I grew up in that house with domestic violence and, and poverty, mm -hmm. I learned that resilience is a muscle that has to be exercised each and every day. So when I talk to audiences and groups, I help them with the, equip them with the tool set to be able to persevere difficult situations, no matter how their circumstances may currently look. And by doing so, when I face the most trying time of my life, when I was in 2019, I was diagnosed with a very aggressive, fast growing form of breast cancer that impacts predominantly African-American women more than anyone else. And I had to realize that I was going to use that platform to be able to invoke change, to be able to spread message about, message about early detection and breast cancer research. And I ended up being able to train for my fifth Olympic games through chemotherapy, through a double mastectomy, because I had already built up that muscle of resilience. So when it comes to the insurance agency or the insurance industry, I actually was a life and health license series seven, 66 and 63 holder. Wow. And I bought my own policy when I was an agent. And I did not know that that was going to be the one thing to make me feel like I could adequately fight with my whole entire being. And so coming to this event and being able to share with a group so deserving, it's not always glamorous to be able to share life insurance. It's hard, people are gonna turn you down, they're gonna stop returning your call. But knowing that there's a bit of information that will save their family, give somebody a mental 
mindset shift during a difficult battle or be able to provide them with the resources and finances that they might need through living benefits when they face a life or death situation like I did. Now I'm able to stand here 100 percent cancer free and taking that story and sharing it to whoever needs hope, whoever is facing difficult obstacles and anybody who would need to feel like, why am I doing this? Helping people reconnect with their why. And that's what I'm all about. I love it. I love it. And she mentioned she used insurance and she mentioned living benefits. Yes. Many people have never heard of that before. And that's a a portion of your policy that you can use while you are living in the event that you have a qualifying event such as what she had with cancer. And I'm just so I'm just so happy that she's here. I'm I'm so happy. (laughs) Um, um, I do want to ask you a question. You came to the event. You're like, what the heck is going on? And then I I want you to like kind of just express to me a little bit about, you know, what you got from the event or what you were thinking. And then you guys shared an amazing moment. I'm not like a super (laughs) emotional person. You guys were there. You guys were like, oh my God. Like, tell me, like, what was that like? Tell me about that. Well, I to to know that Shante was speaking and she's a powerful speaker. Um, You guys hear her life story. It is inspiring from anyone. And um, to know that she was coming to speak, I wanted to be present um, to support her um, because I believe it's important to show up for people um, who we care for and who we want to pour into. And I'm sitting and I'm in the back and you got up and spoke and I'm like, wow, that was powerful. And I text you, that's powerful. You sat in the back, girl? Sit in the front. I'm like, like, that's powerful. Well, we were surprising you, so we don't want you to know. And I'm like, that's a powerful speech. And then the next speaker gets up. Um, I see Sheena, she's, she's, she's moderating, doing her thing. I'm like, who is this gorgeous woman in blue? What a great color, that's dynamic. Yes. Um, say, we had her blue on, it was powerful. Then another speaker came up and they started talking about faith and say, well, she ended hers with a scripture. And then the speaker talked about faith and what got them through. Then the third speaker came up and they said the same thing. And I said, I finally leaned <laughs> over and I said, well, because at this point I'm ready to sign up for whatever <laughs> is happening, right? So I leaned over to the woman who was beside me and I said, well, what is, what is it that you all do? <laughs> and she says, oh, we're, we're insurance. I said, whole life insurance that you need? Yes. And what did it for me is at, at that point, I only, I asked because here I'm ready to come on board um, with a group of people, a diverse group of people. So this time I'm not the minority in the room mm. because it's so diverse and they're energized, but every speaker's message was edifying the person so that the person could be a blessing to those around. Yes. That's what made me ask, what is it that you all are doing in here? <laughs> and so for me to be blessed from just coming to share in a space, it says a lot more about the culture yeah. and what is being provided. And I think it's something to be said when you build trust in family and relationship from hearing speeches. Yes. And then when you find out Wait, you're, you all are offering something that I absolutely need, yes. that we all need yeah. um, in terms of the, the living benefits, in terms of generational wealth mm-hmm. when we think about, mm-hmm. and that's why I was sharing with you, I speak to so many young people and I'm so actively engaged in what's now and what's new. Yes. And we hear about cryptocurrency and all those mm-hmm. things, but I'm a proponent of us being able to secure our families. Yes. And the only, the only surefire thing you can go off of is having that whole life insurance protection, yes. having those benefits, doing what you need for your family. It's like, it's like carving out a forever plan, mm-hmm. right? Okay. And that forever is for whenever. And I just am overjoyed to see a company that cares about servant leaders and yes. building servant leaders, yes. um, people who are in leadership but are serving, yes. serving the people who are following, bringing them in. And so I'm blessed because I just wanted to come and share, but I've been blessed for being here and I thank you for allowing me to be in this space. <laughs> thank you all. <laughs> awesome. Okay, two more questions. So two for you, one for both of you. Yes, okay. All right, so um, some of the women were asking me, they asked me to ask you this. You being an alpha female doing Mm -hmm. all these amazing things you're doing, you're married. Yes. Okay. Yep. How did you ensure that, let me me make sure I get these words correctly. They they asked me to make sure that you continue to speak the king into your husband, make sure that he doesn't feel demasculated and also appreciate his, um, you know, his support. How did you, how did you maneuver that? that? Oh, best question ever, because I did not get that right in the beginning. I was competing internationally as an elite athlete. And when he was there, he would be holding the baby, have a camera in one hand. When I broke the American record, I was in Germany. And so he has our daughter in one hand, the camera in the other, and he's coaching me. And a lot of times when I finished, the cameras would come and they'd interview me, they'd get in front of him, separate us. And 
I did not know how to handle the spotlight while also lifting him up. Mm -hmm. But I had to understand that I chose him for a purpose. He chose me, but I chose him too. And if God so designed that he was supposed to be my husband and I am a strong woman, then how much stronger is that man that he placed me with? Because I believe that he's my covering. He, you know, he's the head of our household. But if I'm constantly leaning in the front and not creating a platform for him mm -hmm. to do his job, it is demeaning for him. So we had a time period where we struggled in our marriage and we didn't think that we were going to make it. But when we got to the point where we decided to take divorce completely off the table and start getting, getting to a platform where we're able to discuss how not you made me feel like this, but express how you're feeling. How can we make a change and how can we do things better? How can we do things differently so that we are both edified and fulfilled and fulfilling our purpose? Yes. And so now we take time for me to support him. Mm -hmm. He takes time to support me. Neither one of us um, dominate the conversation. Neither one of us dominate the relationship. And we understand that each of us, we're together as a team. We're together as a team. And if we can't walk together mm -hmm. and we have each other's back in my most vulnerable moment, when I thought I was gonna die, he was the one who was in the closet, reminding mm -hmm. me of all the battles that I had already overcome, I had already conquered. And I was so glad that I didn't decide to separate from him yes. and instead decided to stay with him because he has been the most tremendous asset. And I would not be the woman of God that I am without the strong man of God that he is. That's awesome. <laughs> yes. oh my That's my gosh, boo. So, the father, husband. It's, it's, just, it's just so much better when you do have a, a very yeah. supporting better half. My my husband, when I was competing, super, super yes. supportive. Yes. It was so tough, but he was so supportive. Uh, awesome, strong mindset. So that that that's a huge thing. Uh, my last question. You can go first, Michelle. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some other, some great things you guys have going on mm -hmm. now in the community? What are you doing now that you're post, you know, athlete? Are you still trying to compete? What you got going on? Um, so, yeah, now currently, um, before I retired, I became a school teacher and I taught in the classroom in Orange awesome. County Public Schools for 11 years um, yes. as a high school teacher as well as um, elementary school <laughs> teacher. Um, and I actually had an opportunity to bring teenagers together in a very organic way and let them share and do a healing space. And so um, I've decided to take that into a broader outside of the education space awesome. and build a platform called All Ears. That'll be mm, a standalone building um, in every single school district. And it's centered around the circle. And the circle is a safe space for teenagers 13 and 19 to come, share any and everything. Um, and it is solely purpose to prevent suicide and bullying. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we used to be able to rely on the school buildings to get it mm -hmm. done. Um, we know our homes need support. Yes. We're not even going to talk yes. about the broken families. I like to say that they need the support. Yeah. Um, so what God showed for me to do is build a space for young people to come, a safe space where they can kind of do some healing. Mm -hmm. Healing with one another to know that they're more alike than different yes. and use um, empower each other to keep moving forward because yes. it's not always about a solution, yes. but about perspective. Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we give them a safe Safe space to gather. Mm -hmm. Those angels that God brought us to be our answers for tomorrow can feel impacted and feel inspired to keep moving forward. So um, that's what's on my heart um, to do. I've started that in Orlando and I am just continuing to pour into our young people. And even more so, I'm, I'm blessed to be able to come into this space to find people to network and be aligned yes. with who I know are going to show up for these children, yes. yeah. who I know I can reach to them and you all for their families to say, mm -hmm. hey, I have something you all should be present and available to in your lives. And so nothing is by happenstance. So I'm just grateful for this opportunity to be here and, and share this moment with everyone that's a part of this. So thank you. I love wow. it. Wow. Something about athletes getting into teaching. <laughs> I taught for seven years. <laughs> yep. I, I was in that space. So I understand. I appreciate all the work you're doing. Thank you. It's awesome. Wow. Okay. Tell us about you. I'm going to build off of that. Um, <laughs> I was a math teacher, but I only lasted one year. <laughs> but my husband is an educator and he's been an educator for 10 years. And, you know, one of the things that I did to expound off of what you're talking about, we do need support in our households. And so much of my journey, who, what made me who I am today started when I was a child. So I wrote a children's book. It's called Boundless. Oh and it's not, it's like middle grader, middle reader. So like age, grade five to nine, but I wrote it like Shrek. So you adults, you will love it too. Okay. 
Nice. And um, it comes out in March 8th and it gives the kids the tool sets to build resilience, to be able to come overcome difficult obstacles and find ways to persevere even in the midst of difficult situations. A lot of our kids are facing the domestic violence, the homelessness. They're facing having their dreams shattered by the by the COVID-19 pandemic and thinking that there's no way past the current circumstances, but mm -hmm. the book is to invoke hope inside of them. And so I'm so incredibly happy about that book. I will be voice narrating it, which is coming out. It's translated in, I'll say nine languages, but I think the word 20 was also thrown out there. It. It's on pre-order right now in Walmart and Target. And um, I'm so incredibly excited about that. And then I have my TEDx talk out there, I which, you know, and, and I'm really, really excited about that. But more importantly, just sharing hope with any group that needs it, wherever I'm sent, I wanna be able to share my life's journey to be able to inspire people um, through their trials right now. Thank you, I love it. And one of the most powerful things that stuck with me, I always say this, um, what you said on stage today, who you are today yes. does not have to determine who you can become tomorrow. Absolutely. That was very powerful for me. Um, I really thank you guys. You guys have been a blessing to me and I know so many others today. Thank you guys so much. We have Shantae Lowe here, four-time Olympic bronze medalist. And we have also Olympian Miss Lashami Robertson, gold medalist. <laughs> thank you ladies so much for your time. This has been an amazing and a blessing to me. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you guys Thank so much. You. Thank you.